But are, uh, it's interesting. I like the fact that you were able to give them quite a bit of history. Yeah, you said a lot in your research. You were looking for one piece of information, one angle that you were going on, and your interest got peaked. Your interest got peaked when people kept giving you information. Did you guys notice how he kept saying, they kept telling me that a black man was arresting a white man. I couldn't, I couldn't get with that. I couldn't get with that. So you had a perception about what a black lawman can do, it sounds like. Yeah, well, my father's father was from Mississippi and he was a deputy sheriff and he always told me, well, they had black lawmen in Mississippi but they only could arrest black people. But then I had a cousin who started on the Chicago Police Department in 1965. And he told me in 1965, a Chicago police officer, if he was an African American, couldn't pick a dead white person up and put him in the paddy wagon. The racism was just that strong. And so it was, I knew about the uh, reconstruction, and basically you're talking about post-reconstruction. And here you have African Americans with the authority to arrest blacks, whites, or Indians, or anybody else who committed federal, broke federal law. This is very unique in American history. And, and actually, um, in my research on Bass Reeves, um, I found where he arrested white people who lynched black folks. Yeah, I saw that in your book. As I was reading that, I saw that you had found that de those details out. And it's interesting listening to your comment right now with you saying you were able to find, even though you knew from the 60s, even though you had relatives that had experience as a law enforcement officer, that they had restrictions on what they could do, yet here was Bass Reeves, before post-construction, like you said, he was able to arrest anyone and there was no color restriction. Right. Did that amaze you in your research? Yeah, it was totally amazing. I mean, he wasn't by himself. Up during the uh, period from 1875 up till Oklahoma statehood in 1907, there was upwards of 50 African Americans who were deputy U.S. Marshals. Bass was just the most famous. And so for black, see, if you look at American history during that period, and in, in just in Texas and Arkansas and other areas, black people were being lynched on a regular basis at that time in American history. But that wasn't happening in Indian Territory, which is very unique. And so they did not lynch black people in Oklahoma until after statehood, actually, uh, in, in any type of numbers. The, the few that got lynched, which Bass was instrumental in investigating, were very rare in Indian Territory. You could get lynched for stealing a horse or stealing cattle or something like that, but they weren't lynching people, for the most part, based on race or color. Wow, now that's really interesting. With you saying, and did you guys also notice what he said? Indian Territory? Indian Territory. So that basically means that Oklahoma was not yet a state. Right. As a matter of fact, when I was reading through Art's book, Black Gun, Silver Star, it's all about the research that he did on the life of Bass Reeves. So there are court accounts, there are witnesses accounts, there are historical perspectives giving you more details about what Art is saying regarding the time, the time in which Bass was serving as a law enforcement officer. You know